Fittingly enough, the legend of the Jersey Devil begins on a dark and stormy night. It was 1735, and in a small, humble cabin in the Pine Barrens of New Jersey, a baby was being born. With local midwives in attendance and her husband and children in a separate room, Mrs. Leeds suffered the familiar throes of labor that would bring her 13th child into the world. One version of the story claims that this was an unwanted child. The Leeds family was not well to do. Mr. Leeds was a drunkard who put forth only minimal effort to provide for his wife and 12 children. As such, Mother Leeds, as she was better known, found the addition of another mouth to feed to be a disastrous prospect, and the realization that she was once again pregnant drove her to absolute exasperation. Distraught, Mother Leeds had raised her hands and face to the sky. Let this one be a devil, then, she proclaimed to the heavens. Another version tells a bit darker tale. According to this version of events, Mother Leeds had indeed wanted to bear this thirteenth child. Not, though, to expand the family she had with her husband, but because she was a witch, and this child was the offspring of Satan himself. Either way, as the storm grew to a crescendo outside, Mother Leeds gave one final push. The result of her pain and effort was a healthy baby boy. Or so it seemed. But even as the midwife wiped the gore from the newborn, the babe began to grow and change. Horn sprouted from its head and black, leathery, bat-like wings from its back. Its hands twisted and transformed into long, clawed talons, and its feet became hooves. Hair quickly covered its body and its eyes began to glow red as they grew larger in the creature's snarling face. With a shrill, inhuman shriek, the monster attacked. It killed its mother first and then tore at the midwives with teeth and claws. It burst through the door next and attacked its siblings and the man who may have been its father. It killed as many as it could before running toward the fireplace and flying up the chimney, its newly acquired long, forked tail trailing behind. Hello there, friends, and welcome to the Paranatural Podcast. My name is Ben. And I'm Pablo Picasso. <laughs> and we are so glad to have you with us tonight as we talk about one of New Jersey's most enduring legends, the winged monstrosity known as the Jersey Devil. Jacob, how you doing tonight, bud? Oh, I'm doing so good, and I would like to thank you for uh, running me back through that video I saw on Sex Ed. <laughs> <laughs> Which one would that be? <laughs> that intro. Mm. Teenage pregnancy. Teenage pregnancy. <laughs> Don't do it. Don't damn do it. <laughs> you wind up giving birth to the devil. Also, I think after like four, it's going to be an oops, baby. Well, I mean, so even for back then, 12 is a fuck ton of kids, yo. Yeah. Like a fuck ton. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which actually is a pretty good lead into things if you want to just jump right ahead today. I mean, let me just ask, how are you? I'm not bad. Not bad. Not bad either. Not bad. Got the studio kind of rearranged here and I see that. You know, it's magical. That's, that's taking some getting used to at the moment, actually, to tell you that the microphone is on the other side now. So yeah, I keep yeah. wanting to lean the wrong way. That's taking a lot a lot of focus well you know habit i got a habit here yeah but yeah i'm i'm doing great looking awesome. forward to hearing the rest of the story well all right then well right. now you brought up the uh the number of kids sex ed yeah okay now obviously the uh mother leads legend is probably just that it's just a story. are you kidding me right i How mean they film on. it yeah yeah right they got pet charts I don't think they got pictures, but, but some people believe they have actually identified mother leads. Yeah. Yeah. Please tell me it's not mother Teresa. No, actually it was okay. a, a woman from, she was originally from England. 
Mm-hmm. Her name was Deborah Smith. She moved to the States and married. I'm going to try and say this name. I've never seen this name before. It's Jaffet. J-A-P-H-E-T. So she moves from England, marries Jaffet Leeds. And apparently they think they have they have identified the family based on the fact that Jafet Leeds did actually name 12 children in his will that he had drawn up in 1736. What's he leaving them, Scotch? I, I mean, who knows? Who knows what he's leaving them? You can't have much if you got 12 damn kids, but he's leaving them something. Yeah. And what is it with not bashing on England here, but like when they come over here, what's with the last name Smith? It's just a very common name in, in England. Yeah. Last name. I'm trying to Americanize it. Well, I mean, it, it's just Smith. She only changed it because she got married. Son of a bitch. (laughs) (laughs) Now, like I said, most likely that story is just legend. And it probably exists mostly because of there was like political and religious tension in the area at the time. You know, 1735, you got people are starting to get a little disgruntled with England. And then there was some religious movement shit going Um, on. So film crews were pissed. Right. Yeah. Yeah, they weren't happy. You. Yeah, having to <laughs> film that. Oof. But no matter what you think of the story, it is true that since around that time, all the way to present day, people claim to see a monster in the Pine Barrens area of New Jersey. Actually, many monsters, but we're only talking about one today. Um, geez, I wonder. Th- I wonder what the name is. New Jersey. Oh, we're going to get the devils. We're going to get there. Don't worry. You're going to like that part. So good. 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 First, let's give a little bit of of description in case people are unfamiliar with the Jersey devil and have never seen pictures of it. We're we're Uh going to give a little description of it. Okay. Now, there are some variations in the descriptions of the creature, but most say it is a bipedal winged creature with hooved feet, clawed hands and the head of a horse or goat. It has glowing red eyes that can cause paralysis if it catches you in its gaze, and it makes a sound unlike anything else. A shrill, high-pitched, shrieking squeal that sounds as if it is hurt. So that's generally the description given. That ugly son of a bitch should cry himself to a puddle. (laughs) Shout out, Squonky. (laughs) Now, some of the variations in the description are some people say it, it has horns. Some people say it doesn't. Uh, sometimes the horns are described as like little spiky horns. Sometimes they're like big curling ram horns and like everything in between. He shaves uh, them like Hellboy. He might. He might trim those fuckers. <laughs> uh, some people say the creature has like a horse tail. Some say it has a long fork tail. Now, the biggest variation in the description of the Jersey devil are in its height. So depending on which witnesses account you are reading and or listening to the devil is anywhere from three to seven feet tall. A little bit of wiggle room, a little bit of wiggle room. So just for reference, the Jersey devil might be shorter than Bridget powers, AKA Bridget, the midget or as tall as Shaquille (laughs) O'Neal. So there's your, there's your your Google those two people if you're unfamiliar with them. Okay. <clears throat> Maybe the first one, but come on. Well, I mean everybody knows Shaq, but you know, everyone knows Shaq. Everybody knows Shaq. Now, here's where we get to what the creature's name is. There Pete. is another variation of what the creature has been called throughout time. It's gotta be Pete. Over the years, the Jersey Devil has been called by a number of names. The Hoodle Doodle Bird, <laughs> the Wozle Bug, and for some very obvious reasons, the Leeds Devil. <laughs> what was the first one again? <laughs> the Hoodle Doodle Bird. <laughs> Hoodle Doodle Bird. God, could you imagine? <laughs> 911 I just got attacked by the hoodle doodle bird. 
God. <laughs> That's my personal favorite. I would be ashamed to say that I got attacked by that. It does make like, you sound a little goofy, doesn't it? <laughs> the hoodle doodle bird just took a giant shit on my porch. <laughs> the hoodle I'll... doodle bird is attacking my dog. <laughs> uh, <laughs> now, whatever you call it, or however tall it is, there have been numerous sightings of the Jersey Devil in the past, like, 250 to 260 years. I'm calling for a seven-foot hoodle doodle bird. The hoodle doodle bird! <laughs> That's my favorite. <laughs> yeah. And that variation looks like the big bird off of Sesame Street. Mm. Ooh, that would be almost scarier. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Give him some black wings. Same voice. Oof. There is nightmares for you. You know, Big Bird is eight foot tall. Oh, shit. The hoodle doodle birds. Eight foot fucking tall. I didn't know that. Yeah, it's canonically eight foot tall. It's a really big bird. And weighs like 150 pounds. I think somebody didn't get there. <laughs> I'm not as scared anymore. <laughs> I think I could take 150 pound, eight foot tall. I mean, he's got to snap like a twig, wouldn't he? You would think, yeah. Especially I mean, with how big its head is. Yeah. There yeah. is no way he's holding that head up. No. <laughs> anyway. Hoodle doodle bird. <laughs> hoodle doodle bird. All right. Let's talk about some of the sightings of the hoodle doodle bird. Sounds like something that chick off of misery <laughs> would call someone. <laughs> it does too. Oh my God. You're right. You are 100% right. <laughs> All right, so the first account here are uh, it, it's a dates unclear kind of account, but uh, like an educated guess is like the 1810s or 1820s. The creature was reportedly sighted by Commodore Stephen Decatur of the U.S. Navy. Now, for those who are not familiar with the rank of Commodore, which I was not until I looked it up yesterday, it is a naval rank that is no longer in use. But when it was, it was the rank between captain and rear admiral. So Stephen Decatur was pretty high up the ladder as far as chain of command goes. Now, Commodore Decatur was visiting the Hanover Ironworks to inspect the casting of cannonballs, which is apparently a thing you have to do. Mm. Now, part of the test, and probably the most fun part, was, of course, firing off a few shots. So the Commodore and crew went out to the firing range where they saw a strange creature flying overhead. America. <laughs> De Decatur went ahead and did what anybody would do if they saw a weird creature and had a cannon. He <laughs> took a shot at it. <laughs> the shot was quote unquote ineffective. That's probably because you missed my guy. <laughs> well, I mean, think about, it. you know, like it, it cannot be easy to hit a moving target with a cannon. No, no. Hoodle doodle birds are, are elusive. They're elusive creatures. And, you know, cannons, don't, you can't exactly lead a target very well with a goddamn cannon. Nah. Now, he did claim to hit the creature in the wing and said that it just punctured the thin membrane but had no other effect. And I'm just thinking, yeah, sure you did, Steve. Sure you hey. did. Hey, Commodores don't lie. <laughs> I mean, get that title by not lying. By not lying. Yeah. I would be a rear admirer. <laughs> rear admirer. <laughs> it is the Navy. Yeah. <laughs> God, I love all them seamen. <laughs> Heard that about you. Shush, Ben. <laughs> Another sighting of note occurred sometime around 1820. Joseph Bonaparte, who was the eldest brother of Napoleon, was out hunting near his estate in Bordentown, New Jersey, because apparently that's what you do while your baby brother is off trying to conquer an empire as you go hunting in New Jersey. Anyway, he was out hunting when he claims to have seen the creature. He, too, along with his hunting party, most likely, shot at it. Now, they didn't even have a cannon, but they shot at it anyway and had no success. They have flintlocks. Uh, let me think. 1800s. Yeah, it would have been flintlocks. 
I wouldn't put past put it past him if I missing that either. No, those those rifles were not exactly accurate, but no, that's why you got the ten pace duels. I mean, you could be accurate with one, but it took a lot of skill. Like people did hunt with them and shit. Yeah, that's saying League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, though. But yeah, it, it did take a great deal of skill to be accurate with a flintlock rifle, smooth bore flintlocks at that. You know. They hadn't started rifling them yet. They had not invented the conical bullet yet. <laughs> That's so, just a ball. Yeah, it's just a ball and a smooth bore. It's a mini cannon. <laughs> it's just easier to wiggle into place and aim with, I guess. And carry around. And carry around. Now, in 1840 and 1841, the devil was blamed for a bunch of livestock killings. That was aliens. And that was kind of how sightings went. Like, it killed livestock. People claimed to have seen it, whatever. Until January of 1909. Between January 16th and January 23rd of that year, newspapers published hundreds of claimed encounters with the Jersey Devil. And it was actually from this time in those newspapers when the Jersey Devil became its official name. So long, Hoodle Doodle. So long, Hoodle Doodle Bird. <laughs> Although it is still like referred to as the Leeds Devil from time to time, but it's no fun to say. I know Hoodle Doodle is so much better. Yeah, we totally should have stuck with that. Yep, yeah. gonna reinvent it. <laughs> gonna bring it back. Now the reports were mostly from South Jer- South Jersey and the Philadelphia area. But Delaware and Maryland actually did have some reports published in newspapers at the time. So the hoodle doodle bird was making the rounds. (laughs) Now, some of the reports were the creature attacked a trolley car full of people in Haddon Heights. It also attacked a social club in Camden. A lot of little towns formed posses. Because of this thing, and police officers in Camden and Bristol, Pennsylvania, saw and fired on the creature to no effect. Now, this is 1909. We have more modern firearms now, but they still can't hit the goddamn thing. So it's either bulletproof or real fucking elusive. The devil. What? Go ahead. Um, All right. Nobody knows my name on here. I'm Pablo Picasso. But I have fired up at flying birds, and you ain't hitting them. It Especially is pretty, if you're aiming without a shotgun. It is pretty hard to do with a, a single projectile. Yeah. So that's a fair point. But anyway, the devil reappeared in Camden a few days after being shot at there, and a local woman found the monster trying to eat her dog. She was having absolutely none of that and gave it a good old fashioned broom beating and it flew <laughs> off. <laughs> In West Collingswood, the creature appeared on somebody's rooftop and stayed there long enough for firemen to arrive and spray it with a fire hose, <laughs> which caused it to attack them before flying away. That pissed me off, too. There were headlines about mysterious tracks being found in the snow all over the place. Uh, Tracks that crossed yards, hopped fences, appeared on rooftops, just fucking everywhere. Uh, In Hampton, Hamilton, yeah, Hamilton, bloodhounds were brought in to track the creature, but the dogs refused to follow the trail. Right, because they didn't want to get eaten. Nobody had a broom. (laughs) Nobody had a broom. (laughs) All that week, people all over reported that that their livestock, mostly chickens, was being killed. We got against chickens. uh, Chickens are tasty, dude. Not raw. Hey, man, devil's got to eat, you know. The hoodle doodle. The hoodle doodle bird got to eat. (laughs) Now, out of fear and panic, area schools were closed, and people refused to leave their houses to the point that the mills in the area had to shut down because nobody would come to work. Hoodle doodle is just as bad as COVID. Like for real, like people were really fucking afraid of this thing. Like ridiculously afraid of this thing. But 
after about a week, things calmed down and people reached out to the scientific community for answers. Professors from Philadelphia and experts from the Smithsonian were of the opinion that it might be a prehistoric creature from the time of the dinosaurs that had survived in the nearby limestone caves. Yeah, I don't know if that's exactly scientific, but that's what they thought. <laughs> they thought that maybe it was a pterodactyl or a paleosaurus. Now, we're all familiar with pterodactyls. I looked up what Paleosaurus was, and from what I read, they're not even sure that's a real dinosaur. So, <laughs> there you go. There's that for you. <laughs> now, some scientists from New York thought it might be a carnivorous marsupial that had been thought to be extinct. Yeah, last time I checked, we don't have marsupials in the United States, but whatever. <laughs> Only a lemur. It's a <laughs> lemurs are not marsupials. Sure they are. No, they're not. Sure they are. <laughs> Imagination. What's that Einstein quote? Imagination is stronger than. What is that quote? I have no idea what you're talking about. It's an Einstein quote. Are you sure? Yeah. Oh. I saw it in a show. I have no idea. Lemurs are marsupials if they want to be. Oh, okay. <laughs> they identify as marsupials? <laughs> yeah. There's a dude who identifies in a, as an Apache helicopter. Well, I mean, if you're going to be anything, be an Apache helicopter. <laughs> now, of course, nobody could locate a specimen alive, dead, or fossilized that matched the description of the Jersey Devil. Now, doodle. doodle. Robert D. Carson, superintendent of the Philadelphia Zoo, decided to jump into the craze by offering a $10,000 reward for the creature's capture. What year? 1909. Holy shit. I did the math on that one. In today's money, that would be the equivalent of $317,702.20. Holy shit. Or about four gallons of gas. But, <laughs> yeah. but anyway, yeah, my truck's been on a half a gallon for a while. <laughs> I'm glad I got the bike, dude. I'd go broke trying to drive my truck right now. Yeah, I can get broke with a shoelace express. No, it wasn't just uh Robert D. Carson that jumped in on the craze, a couple of other goobers who wanted it on things had a real whopper of an idea. <laughs> See, these two guys were animal trainers at the Art Street Museum in Philadelphia. So they got themselves a kangaroo, painted it with green stripes and stuck some fake wings on it and started advertising for folks to come see the Jersey Devil. <laughs> so now I can punch you. Why are you punching me? No, 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 no. Oh, them <laughs> kangaroos, they punch. Well, yeah, sure they do. So now the Jersey <laughs> Devil can punch. I'm just like, like, I read that. I just laughing my ass off. It's like, dude, come on, guys. I admire the hustle, but really, guys, really? At least get one of those giant bats. One of the hammerhead bats? Yeah. They actually, it do, those do look a lot like the Jersey Devil. How do you know? How but, do you know what the hoodle doodle bird looks like? I've seen pictures. Which I will be sharing in the Facebook group. So if you want to see what the Hoodle Doodle Bird looks like, jump in the Facebook group. I'll be putting some pictures in there. Air Natural Podcast, guys. That's right. Look it up on Facebook. So yeah, anyway, we got guys painting kangaroos now. <laughs> I mean, make your money, fellas, but goddamn. I'm going to try that. I'm going to give River some wings and... Call her the Jersey Devil. Call her the Hoodle Doodle Bird. Yeah. Certainly not bipedal. She's missing one of them. <laughs> She's tripedal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, poor one legged dog. <laughs> now, obviously, there are still sightings and everything, but nothing has ever matched the wave of sightings from 1909. Yet. Yet. But in 1925, a farmer in Greenwich, New Jersey, claimed to have shot an unidentified creature that matched the description 
of the devil. Nobody ever turned up. So <laughs> there's that. In 1939, the Jersey Devil was reportedly named the official state demon. Yep. Two-time governor of the state was quoted as saying, When I was a boy, I was never threatened with the boogeyman. We were threatened with the Jersey Devil morning, noon, and night. Now, does every state get a state devil? No, or... not as far as I'm aware, no. <laughs> I think New That's Jersey's sad. the only one. Man. Michigan would have a weird one. The dog man. Yeah. Now, stories of sightings still continue today. And I've got two of them that I just kind of copied down from weirdnj.com. So weirdnewjersey.com. Oh, that's what that is. Yeah, that's <laughs> what that is. <laughs> but you can find like a ton of them. I just copied these two because I ran across them and I was like, okay, these are cool. So this one is called The Devil on Route 9. Let me tell you of a sighting of the Jersey Devil. I was driving up Route 9 in Bayville at around 10 p.m. There were two cars in front of me, and we were traveling about 35 miles per hour. To the right of Route 9 is a mini mall type building with woods behind it. To the right is all woods. All of a sudden, I saw this big thing running across Route 9. It looked like one of the classic pictures of the Jersey Devil. It had no tail, no fur, its ribs showed, and it had a long, odd head with short ears that laid flat. It looked almost 10 feet tall. I noticed it because the first car stepped on its brakes, as did the second car. When I looked ahead, I saw this thing galloping across Route 9 and strayed into the woods. I was not really scared because it did not register yet. I stopped to mail something in the mailbox about 300 feet from the main road, and I saw a child's shirt, shorts, and one sneaker laying on the ground. I mailed my letter, ran into my car, and laid rubber all the way home. I was certain that I had seen the Jersey Devil. No one believes me. They say it was a deer. I have never seen a deer that big, that fast, or that weird looking in my life. Was it? What is really creepy is that the other two people driving in front of me stepped on their brakes, so they must have seen it too. That account comes from Sunny Z. So, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> okay. So, <clears throat> 10 feet tall. 10 feet tall. Galloping. Apparently. Um, isn't galloping something that you do? Four legged creatures do? I don't know. Because, like, I've tried to gallop and it just turns into trotting. <laughs> What's the difference? Uh, <laughs> What's the difference, he says? I mean, when a human does it. What's Majesticness? The oh, is that right? Well, maybe the Jersey Devil's heckin' majestic, bud. Yeah. <laughs> doesn't sound like it now what's with the kids shirt shorts and one shoe i am pretty sure that what they're insinuating here is that the jersey devil had crossed route nine just after having a child for a snack okay now <laughs> of course that's pretty thin i would understand the shoe i would understand even the shirt but come on. Or here's the thought. Maybe the Jersey Devil is a shapeshifter and it shapeshifted from the form of a kid. So it had to get naked so it didn't destroy its clothes or its mom would yell at it. And then it turned into a 10 foot tall galloping ugly creature and ran across the road. But it kept one shoe. Uh, you know how kids are. They lose shoes all the time. My Ten kids are constantly tall. walking around with one shoe, can't find the other. Have you uh, tested them as the Jersey Devil? I or? might need to. Might need to. What's the Jersey Devil call? Hoodle doodle. <laughs> Hoodle doodle. doodle. <laughs> they come running for that. Don't worry, I'm watching behind you. Okay, good. Thanks. Appreciate that. 
one of them just flew, but I think that's normal. <laughs> Are those bat wings supposed to be there? <clears throat> all right. Something that kids do, I swear. It is all the time. This next account is titled Screams of the Jersey Devil. I actually have two stories about the Jersey Devil. The first one is my own experience. As a little kid, my parents took my family camping every summer around the Pine Barrens. One night, as we all slept in a big tent, I woke up to the sound of what, to me, was like a woman screaming. It was a blood-curdling scream over and over again, but as I was the only one awake, I thought, being the naive child I was, that a woman was being attacked by a wolf. I don't know where I got that conclusion, but it must have been from the screams. No one believed my story, ever. As I got older, I became more interested in the Jersey Devil legend. Many of the stories were people talking about the screams they hear in the Pine Barrens at night. As they described them, I got chills because I knew what they were talking about. A few years later, I was talking to my uncle, who is from Pomona, and he compared what I described to what he has also heard growing up in the Pines. This leads me to my other story, which is his experience. He said that when he was growing up, he had this dog that would stay by him all the time as he played out in the woods and fields around his house. One day, while he was on his porch, he could hear those same screams coming from deep in the woods, and his dog ran out of sight after the noise. Apparently, the screams got louder, and the dog scrambled back to the porch with his tail between his legs and never left the porch again. As hard as he tried, my uncle could not get, one, get his once faithful dog to follow him into those woods. So maybe this isn't any hard evidence, but it sure as hell is weird. There is no doubt in my mind that something exists out there. And that is from Megan. Yep, yep. I don't have anything to say about this. Yeah, it's just, kind of, well, I mean, like, a lot of people do talk about hearing the Jersey Devil screams. Yeah. And it's one of those things where, like, a lot of animals make a lot of fucked up noises in the woods. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, like full grown foxes, they can sound like women screaming. Oh, yeah, their Rugers, screams are freaking. Lions. Yeah. Yeah. And like, I don't think there's probably not mountain lions anymore in the Pine Barrens. No, I'm not sure if wolves are there either, but probably not anymore. But foxes probably most definitely are. Yeah. I, I you know, who knows I, if a cougar didn't doesn't wander in from time to time. Right. I you wouldn't know? argue that. <laughs> Like, uh, it's certainly not a 10 foot tall galloping <laughs> shapeshifter. Right, for sure. Look, the, like, the quality of story does vary when it comes to Jersey Devils. No, I'm just saying, like, I trust animals. Animals know when something's bad. Yeah, so if your dog's freaking out like that, something's probably real fucked up. But especially if it's a very faithful dog. Yeah. Something's got to shake it to its core if it won't follow you no more. Right. So, like, good job, Megan. A lot better than uh, whoever did the other story. Sorry if you're <laughs> listening to this podcast. Just <laughs> if you tell me how it was galloping and you could still tell that it was 10 foot tall. I feel much better about about this and probably be able to sleep at night. <laughs> 10 foot tall jersey devils i'm blaming you for my insomnia <laughs> now there are a few stories of encounters with the jersey devil that are of a seemingly violent and scary creature right we've talked about some of those you know like when it attacked uh the trolley and things like that but it seems to me that most people are frightened not because of anything the creature does but more so because it's just strange and unusual so, I mean, that's like the couple of stories we just heard. It didn't attack anybody. It didn't do anything major, right? Like one person heard it. Another person just saw it run across the road. And that's a lot of what stories you hear. You hear like I heard a scream and I looked up and there it was flying around or sitting in a tree or running across the field or whatever. So, Jacob, what do you think? It, maybe the Jersey Devils just misunderstood. I mean, Ain't got shit on your big foots like attacking Volkswagen Beetles. Right, exactly. Yeah. Um 
granted if i saw something fitting the description of a three foot tall uh what was the bird I the hoodle doodle or, bird hoodle doodle if i if i saw <laughs> something matching a three foot tall hoodle doodle to a 10 foot tall galloping shape shifting jersey devil either one i'm gonna be like the hell is that and i probably, mean right it's gonna be unsettling no right, doubt pucker my butt but you know it didn't do anything and like i don't count it attacking livestock no as vi- because you know i've done that you gotta eat i mean come on man you yeah gotta eat. yeah now because i kind of have this theory that the jersey devil ain't all that bad i i actually found a few stories that that paint our old hoodle doodle friend in kind of a more positive and friendly light you ready for this? Hard to hear. <laughs> oh, this is where it gets fun. This is where he's hoodle doodle and not Jersey Devil. Now, according to legend, the infamous Captain Kidd once buried a treasure in Bernagat Bay. Once the treasure was buried, Captain Kidd cut off one of his men's heads so that the treasure would be forever guarded. I don't know how that works. Ain't like a dude with no head is gonna see a treasure thief coming, but hey, whatever. Um, so just uh, I got us a little. Yes, the undead can guard anything. Okay, if you say so. <laughs> anyway, folks say that the Jersey Devil and the beheaded Buccaneer became friends, and that they take walks along the Atlantic shoreline together, and in the nearby marshlands, they are seen walking together and hanging out, apparently. (laughs) In 1870, a fisherman claims to have seen the hoodle-doodle bird cavorting with and serenading a mermaid. Oh, he was getting it. He was getting it. I want to see that hybrid. Let's get woof. <laughs> <laughs> Fish tail, bat wings, yeesh. God damn. A horse head with long blonde hair. And a coconut Yum. bra. <laughs> Little claws and a coconut bra. And you can see his ribs. Oof. Oh, boy. <laughs> that little hoofs on the end of that fishtail. <laughs> that would be one ugly son of a bitch. That one's going to be a puddle, too. Horns. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Every man's fantasy to see a mermaid, but oof. <laughs> not, not that one. <laughs> no, no, no. All right. One more. Despite having no strong political ties to one side or the, or the other, the Jersey Devil was said to have sat down at some point with Republican Judge French for a ham and egg breakfast. <laughs> So see, the Jersey Devil's not such a bad guy. <laughs> he just wants some ham and eggs and to get it on with a mermaid. <laughs> Makes friends with ghosts that don't have heads. <laughs> um. Uh, <laughs> all right, all right, all right. So I just got a little tidbit. Um. <sighs> Who openly told that story? I don't know. (laughs) Okay. Part two of this. Why would he even need to attack livestock if he's getting ham and egg breakfast? Well, not everybody is willing to feed the hoodle doodle bird a ham and egg breakfast. If it keeps him away from... Maybe Judge French was just a way nicer guy than everybody else. And he's like, hey, you in the tree, would you like some ham and eggs? All right, all right. So, Benjamin, Hmm. if you saw a seven-foot-tall hoodle-doodle, would you be like, sit down at my table, have some ham and eggs? I would now. Now that I know that maybe it works. You'd be like, you stay away from my dog. You can eat these raw (laughs) eggs. Be like, hey, devil, how do you take your eggs, buddy? Yeah, yeah. How about you uh, put this collar on? (laughs) <laughs> be my support hoodle doodle <laughs> my emotional support devil 
<laughs> Everyone needs one. <laughs> Man. <laughs> Wonder if that would hold up in court. I mean, the judge said it. I don't know. <laughs> would say that. Hmm. Now, like, obviously, okay, so those last few stories were a little bit off the rails, but people really, really do report seeing this thing all the time out there. The second story was actually quite believable. Mm. Right, because mermaids. Right, fraternizing with a mermaid. Who doesn't want to? I mean, all right, that's fair. Now, here's a question that's not even related to to, uh, the Jersey Devil hoodle doodle. How does a uh, mermaid get it on? How the hell should I know? I mean, it would just make more sense if they had like a fish torso and human took us down, you know. I mean, I guess. But that would not be very attractive. Not at all. Actually, according to legend, they just take men's and, like, drown them underwater and force them to breed. Yeah, but how? What are they intercoursing? Well, look, you know how fish do it, right? They, like, lay the eggs and then the male yeah, fish the, just... The dude, yeah, the dude may, fish blows his load on it. I maybe it's like that. that. It's not even worth drowning. They lay the eggs and then give them a handy and... In salt water? Ouch! <laughs> Is it, I don't know what kind of handies you're getting, but there, there's not supposed to be open wounds involved. Are you kidding me? That's the only way you know you're doing it right. Break a sweat by the time there's blood. <laughs> anyway, so Jersey Devil. There are some theories as to what it might be. Okay. The number one is, of course, hoax, mistaken identity type thing. Right. Bullshit. The second one, people think that everybody who reports the Jersey Devil is mistaking a Sand Hill crane for the Jersey Devil. <laughs> now, I will give it this. Okay, a Sand Hill crane is about three goddamn feet tall. And there's a similarity in silhouette. Right? Because they got like the long neck, big head, beak thing going on. And the big wings and stuff. But that is literally where the similarities stop. <laughs> like, maybe in silhouette, they have a, a resemblance to one another. Also, their horrific screaming. Definitely. You know, I don't know what sound a Sandhill Crane makes. I should have looked that up. <laughs> Probably. I do know this, that Sandhill Cranes are referred to as the ribeye of the sky, because apparently they're very tasty. Yeah, they got hunted to almost extinction. Yep, for sure. Uh, yeah. yeah, apparently they're real good, but yeah, my uncle had one once. He says it's delicious. But yep, those are the prevailing theories of the Jersey Devil. I don't, I hmm. don't, I don't. Now I want to try a hoodle doodle bird. I mean, maybe somebody, like somebody, might mistake a sandhill crane for one, but I kind of doubt with all the actual reported sightings that are out there that that's what everybody is doing. I've never seen a ten foot tall galloping sandhill crane. That's true. That's true. Last time I checked the Sand Hill Crane, never tried to eat nobody's dog. It's true. So, uh, yeah. Um, <clears throat> and I've never seen a Sand Hill Crane sit down with a judge to eat ham and eggs. Nope. Never, never seen that or serenade a mermaid. I mean, <laughs> depends on the mermaid <laughs> <laughs> anyway or how much cash the sandhill crane has mermaids are hookers now what is yeah. a mermaid gonna do with cash um sparkly seashell bra why would it have a <laughs> coconut bra I'm sorry i didn't bring that up earlier seashells well, yeah seashells do you, know, do you know why mermaids wear seashell bras because I doubt there's a Victoria's Secret down there. Because B shell bras are too small and D shell bras are too big. Anyway. <laughs> Fuck, Benjamin. <laughs> and on that note, I think that's about all we got for today. So if you enjoy our episodes, 
Uh, please feel free to give us a rating and review and tell a friend that really helps us grow the show, brings more people in. Anything you got, Jacob, for the people? It's a free dad joke for everyone. <laughs> <sighs> All right, then I guess we'll say good night. Good night. <laughs> <laughs>